Are you ready to be scared? So, what are you afraid of? Snakes, fire, dark places. Flunk in this class. That's the only thing that frightens you. That and girls that say no. Welcome back to 80s Horse Central for another Monster Mash mini review. In this video, I want to take a gander at a fun and entertaining anthology horror film from the 1980s, After Midnight, released in 1989. The film was co-written and co-directed by the Wheat Brothers, Ken and Jim. The brothers were no stranger to the horror genre, having written the screenplay for The Dream Master, as well as the first movie I ever reviewed for the channel, 1989's The Fly 2. The brothers had a difficult time getting studios to greenlight a horror anthology as they were not seen as box office draws, but MGM eventually agreed to produce and release the film. After Midnight bombed at the box office and found very little fanfare on VHS, but let's enroll in Professor Derek's Psychology of Fear 101 and see if After Midnight makes the grade. How about the rest of you? You ready to be scared? <laughs> I am. Higher Education is about to dive into the depths of hell with this trilogy of terror that will scare you senseless. According to Professor Edward Derrick, the only way to truly understand the psychology of fear is to be afraid, very afraid. So he invites his class home for a night of three spine-chilling stories. First, a married couple loses their head in a haunted house. Next, ravenous guard dogs prowl for cute co-eds. And finally, a psychopathic killer stalks a terrified telephone operator. But as the frightened freshmen get a hands-on lesson in real fear, the extracurricular creep fest enters a class of its own, with a fiery final test that could scare the students to death. Well, if you're not lost, oh. you must have come looking for me, huh? <laughs> yeah, you. Oh! Everybody oh. has some real good times, honey. Uh, Lisa? I, th I think we ought to move along now. Great ideas, Jen. Let's go. Oh. Choco! Oh. Oh. After Midnight is a stylish and well-made horror anthology that features three fun horror stories and a rather wild and weird wraparound prologue and epilogue. The film features a recognizable cast including Marge Helgenberger of CSI fame and the hottest Friday 13th girl, Judy Arnson. The performances in the film are decent all around, but I have to admit I really enjoyed Rami Zada's turn as the unhinged professor. However, I did find the main character of Allison to be annoying and weird. The actress playing the student with eerie premonitions and intuition comes off as very distracting and wooden at times. The movie features good production values and a spooky yet playful musical score. The special effects are on the average side and the gore is pretty minimal, but you do get a fun decapitation. Uh, Miss Birch, hi. This is Alex from All Night. Um, I, I probably shouldn't be bothering you like this, but that guy just called again and, and he knows that you're there. It's too late for warnings, Alex. It's too late for her. And it's too late for you. The film's first story is about a couple entering a haunted house where rumored murders took place after their car breaks down. This first story is your typical haunted house tale, but does do a nice job of subverting expectations with a mean little twist at the end. The second story in the anthology is my favorite of the three, and involves a group of girls getting lost clubbing and end up on the wrong side of the tracks, where they are attacked by a deranged man and his pack of killer dogs. This story features some great suspense and a few over-the-top moments that make it a highlight. The cast featured in this story is great, and the tension is definitely high in this outing. It's the most original tale of the bunch, and most memorable in my opinion.
The third and final story follows a telephone operator at an all-night messaging service being stalked by a crazed murderer. It's a decent enough tale, but does feel a bit unoriginal. The ending is abrupt, but also kind of effective. Now, the movie's ending involving the conclusion to the Professor wraparound storyline is quite bizarre. The ending finds Allison being chased by the Professor's skeleton wielding an axe throughout the location seen in the movie's previous three stories. It turns out the whole movie was just a premonitory dream for Allison. I can't ever decide whether I like that ending or if I find it super lame and underwhelming. I go back and forth on it. Help me. After Midnight moves along at a brisk pace and never comes off as boring. This isn't operating on the same level as Creepshow or Creepshow 2, but it's a fun and enjoyable horror anthology that deserves a little more recognition than it gets. It might not feature a bunch of gore or sleaze, but I've always found it to be a cheesy and quaint little 80s horror flick and I recommend giving it a shot. And the wraparound story is equally as entertaining as the horror segments that are featured, which typically isn't the case when it comes to anthologies. Go ahead. Show them how easy it is. Don't push me. Oh, what's the matter? Can't you do it? I could. Shut up! 